First of all, I want to I thank Marianne for her kind introduction and thanks uh, for all the incredible work she does as uh, your Minister of Employment, Workforce and Labour. Uh, I know everyone in the room appreciates the hard work you do too, Marianne. Thank you. Um, also, I have to thank the event organizers, both for putting on a great conference and for inviting me back. Uh, this is the fourth year in a row that I've been able to join you, and I'm looking forward to going five for five next year. <laughs> Uh, but today, uh, obviously, we have to start on a serious note uh, with a few words about Fort McMurray. I know that the ongoing devastation taking place there is on the minds of many Canadians right now. That's true for my family, and I know it's true for yours, too, especially for all your members who work in, live in, and love Fort McMurray. Uh, thinking of Kevin Thomas. Uh, are you here, Kevin? Yeah. Of the uh, operating engineers who uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, you yeah. know worried about his home and his future, but we're all here for you, Kevin, and for everyone, uh, everyone from your community. I want you to know that our government is working closely with Premier Notley and the local authorities to continually assess the situation. We know that help is needed right now and will be needed for months and years to come, and we're looking for ways to help. I know that you are too, and I want to thank you in advance for all the hard work you and all your members will be doing, hopefully very soon, to help make Fort Mac a great and growing community once again. We need you there. Kevin needs you there. Fort McMurray needs you there. We need you to rebuild the roads and the houses. From carpentry to concrete, from plumbing to power lines, we need your help. And I'm tremendously reassured to know that when it comes time to rebuild Fort McMurray, we will have you on our side. In the meantime, your hard work and ours goes on. Notre gouvernement est maintenant au pouvoir depuis un peu plus de six mois. Un six mois très occupé. Je veux vous parler de ce qu'on a réussi à accomplir en peu de temps. De ce que ces réalisations représentent pour vos membres et pour le cœur de l'économie canadienne, la classe moyenne. L'investissement historique que nous faisons dans l'infrastructure est l'une de nos grandes réussites. Au cours des dix prochaines années, notre gouvernement investira plus de 120 milliards de dollars dans le transport en commun, l'infrastructure verte et l'infrastructure sociale. There are many reasons why investing $120 billion in public transit green infrastructure and social infrastructure makes sense for Canada and for Canadians. Investing in infrastructure creates good, well-paying jobs that help the middle class grow and prosper today. Investing in infrastructure also makes it easier to move people and products, something we need for sustained economic growth. And investing in infrastructure in things like affordable housing and community centers also builds strong communities, the kind of places we're all proud to call home. And of course, you and your members have a critical role to play in all of this. We need your skills, your expertise, your work ethic, and your help to get the job done. One thing that we know doesn't help is legislation that makes it more difficult for unions to organize and support their members. That's why some of the very first meetings I had as a Prime Minister were with groups who represent Canadian workers. In that meeting with Bob and Robert here with me today, um, they impressed upon me as they were filling their uh, year-end filings uh, just the urgency and the importance of uh, addressing C-377 uh, 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 and uh, C-525 uh, right away. And that's what we did right away in Bill C-4. And it was because of you. <laughs> Seulement quelques semaines après notre entrée en fonction, j'ai en effet rencontré vos dirigeants, dont Robert Kutcheran et Robert Blakely, pour entendre vos préoccupations. Et vous nous avons bel et bien entendu. Après avoir baissé les impôts des familles, comme nous l'avons promis, nous nous sommes débarrassés des lois antisyndicales du gouvernement précédent. 
C'est l'une des premières mesures que nous avons prises. Notre projet de loi C4 permettra d'abroger deux projets de loi précédents, soit C377 et 525, qui ciblaient les syndicats de façon injuste. Mes amis, le gouvernement que je dirige respecte les syndicats. Il ne les attaque pas. We believe that all Canadians benefit when there is a fair and balanced approach to labor relations, and I'm very proud that we're advancing legislation and an approach that will restore that balance. In our recent budget, we also increased federal investments in training and employment programs to help Canadians get the skills they need to build a better future for themselves and for their families. Part of this plan includes investments to strengthen union-based apprenticeship training. We know that apprentices work and learn in a variety of settings, including through union-based training centers. That's why we're investing more than $85 million over five years to better support union-based apprenticeship training. Among other things, these investments are intended to help purchase or upgrade equipment and better leverage innovative training approaches so that apprentices will have greater access to modern training and hands-on learning opportunities. This is good news for apprentices, for their prospective employers, and for every Canadian who will benefit from the good work that a better trained, better skilled workforce can provide. Now, I want to leave some time for your questions, and there's a couple of mics here. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up very shortly. Uh, but I want to acknowledge just a few things before I finish. First, I want to congratulate your membership on their support of two important, inclusive, and successful programs, Build Together and Helmets to Hard Hats. Together, these programs encourage and support the greater participation of women and veterans in skilled construction trades. Thank you for all that you do. As you know, I believe that we're a country strong, not in spite of our differences, but because of them. And it's wonderful to see an industry like yours doing its part to help build a more inclusive workforce. Merci beaucoup. Now, I hope in the last few minutes I've been able to give you a sense of what our government has been able to accomplish so far. But as I said, it's only been six months. There's a lot more hard work ahead of us than there is behind us. But I'm still proud of what we've been able to do. We're making historic investments in infrastructure. We're putting an end to legislation that unfairly targets unions. We're supporting greater training in the skilled trades, including union-based apprenticeship training. And next week, here's a little sneak preview, we'll be announcing how we intend to implement more of our budget commitments, this time around better supporting electric and alternative fuel vehicles, infrastructure projects that your membership will help build. Nous passons à l'action maintenant parce que c'est la bonne chose à faire pour notre économie et pour les Canadiens. Au nom du gouvernement et de tous les Canadiens, je veux vous remercier de travailler aussi fort. Chaque jour, nous pouvons constater à quel point votre travail est important. Merci de m'avoir reçu ici aujourd'hui. Thank you for your hard work every day, building a better future, building stronger communities, building a better Canada. Merci beaucoup. I look forward to your questions.